In this video, we are going to be talking about EV training and how to do it. Basically, this guide is going to help you understand the fundamentals of this and help you create very powerful Pokemon that you could use in competitive battling as well as doing high level difficulty raids. Pay attention to everything in this video because it's going to help you out a lot and that way you're not left with any questions unanswered. Two questions that I want to get out the way before we go in this video is, can you get EVs via auto battling? The answer is no. Is there Pokerus in the game to help with EV training? The answer is no. What are EVs? EVs are like base points. Pokemon get these EVs every time you capture or battle them. In fact, every single Pokemon that you battle has a specific EV in a specific stat. For example, when you encounter Lechonk in the beginning of a game and battle it and defeat it, it's going to be responsible for giving you one EV of HP. To put it into better perspective for you, four EVs are equal to an increase of one stat as your Pokemon hits level 100. For example, like I mentioned, killing off one Lechonk equals one EV in HP. So if you knock out four Lechonks, four EVs in HP are equal to plus one stat point in HP. So I'm gonna need you guys to put your math caps on. I know it's Pokemon and we're gaming, but this is the best way to understand it. Now, all Pokemon have six stats. HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. And every single different Pokemon that you're going to encounter is going to have an EV stat that they're going to be giving you in one of those stats. Now, while you're EV training your Pokemon, each Pokemon can have a total of 510 EVs maximum. You cannot get any more than 510 total gain from battling or catching Pokemon. Each specific stat like attack, speed, special defense, HP, and special attack can only have a maximum of 252 EV points in each one. A stat, again, can only have 252 EVs in each. So if I train attack, I'm only going to be able to have maximum 252 EVs in attack. I cannot break past that barrier. If I train something else like speed, I'll only be able to have 252 EVs in speed and add those two together and the remainder is six more EVs to be used in wherever you want and that will give you a total of 510 total EVs. Unfortunately, based on math, there is always going to be a waste of two EVs. They I don't know why, but there is always a waste of two EVs. Now, every single player has the freedom to put these EVs wherever they want. You necessarily don't have to put 252 in one stat. You can distribute them everywhere you want, but most people who want to maximize attack, special attack, if they have a fast Pokemon, they're going to prioritize things like speed and dumping it all into speed. Those things are going to be important for those players who are doing competitive and terror raid battles. That's the best way to optimize these EVs. It can even be more powerful when you combo EV training along with breeding and IVs and natures and Pokemon moves, but I go over a lot of that stuff in my Pokemon breeding guide. And pretty much, you can make a Pokemon unstoppable with these two guides together. Also, if you could please hit that subscribe button. I put a lot of effort into these videos, and it means a lot that you guys can just subscribe to it. It's just a button. It's going to show up on your feed anyway, and you're going to watch it, so might as well just hit subscribe while you're here. Let's talk about resetting your EVs. Let's say you explored the entire Paldea region, you beat the game, and you have a bunch of favorite Pokemon of yours in your party, and now you want to make them optimize and better. Well, there's a way to actually fix all their stats because most likely their EVs have been spread out all over and it's an absolute chaotic mess. And those 510 EVs are everywhere. So there's a solution to that and this game has added specific berries to do that. These berries are the Pomeg Berry, which lowers HP, the Kelpsy Berry, which lowers attack, the Qualet Berry, which lowers defense, the Hondu Berry that lowers special attack, the Grep Berry that lowers special defense, and the Tomato Berry, which lowers speed. Now, each of these berries will be able to lower a specific stat of a Pokemon down by 10. But something cool that Pokemon has added in is that if those EV stats for one thing is way over 100, let's say you have like 200 EVs in attack, you give a Kelpsy Berry to lower it. The first berry will always bring down the EVs to a hundred, no matter how high they are. After that, every single berry afterwards will just be minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. So in total, to lower a maximized EV of a Pokemon, all you have to do is just give 11 berries of that specific type. It's that simple. Where can you find these berries? That's the big question. You can either find these berries in raids, you can find them at the auction house, but the easiest way is just to ride around and pick them up. What do I mean by that? Okay, getting berries is actually a lot easier than people think. You don't have to just raid for them and you don't have to go to the auction for them. They're right over here in this area. 
All you have to do is come over to Artizone, and you're going to notice that there's two areas. It's kind of between Lavincia and Artizone, but there are two areas. This is Area 1, which is marked right here, East Province Area 1. And then you're going to cross over this lake if you jump over, or if you just take the pathway across this bridge, and you'll enter Area 2. All six berries are going to be located in this area, but what the game did was nicely split them up in two sections. In Area 1, you're going to be having the Qualit, the Greppa, and the tomato berry and the way to find them is pretty simple you just have to look in the grass for sparkling items and what does sparkling items mean it doesn't mean it's going to be red it's not the yellow pokeball standing up it's literally going to be the sparkling things on the floor so not this <laughs> oh cool got thunderfang we're going to be going for things that are very bright and sparkly so let's go ahead and see okay, here we go Boom, I got two tomato berries, so you get even more than one. And right off the bat, with those two tomatoes, I can lower my speed by 20 EVs. There, I guess got one greppa berry. Just like that, I now can lower my special defense by 10 or get it down to 100 if it's over 100. Another sparkly here. There's another greppa berry and the qualit berry. Sometimes you might even get lucky and get 10 stacks of a berry. Now, when you make the jump over to East Province Area 2, the berries that are going to be on the floor are going to completely change. You're going to be able to get access to the Pomeg Berry, the Kelpsy Berry, and the Hondu Berry. Kelpsy Berry times 10. There we go. There's a stack of 10. I can fully reduce one entire EV stat with 11. And as you can see, I haven't done much in the game in order to get these berries to spawn. They are just going to be here for early game players and late game players who just want to farm. And if you want to refresh all the spawns that show up on the floor, all you got to do is date skip. So you want to save your game and exit out of it. And once you're here, go into your settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And over here, you're going to hit the current time, date and time. Take off your internet clock and you can just jump one day. Boom, 23rd. That's how to do it. And then when you go back in your game, all the items should be respawned on the map. What are the methods of EV training? Method number one, vitamin EV training. For this, all you have to simply do is give your Pokemon vitamins. You will find vitamins scattered throughout your journey in the Paldea region, but you can also purchase them with money or LP from the Chansey Supply Shop. Now, the easiest way to find a Chansey Supply Shop is simply by zooming in all the way on the map and just looking at the store. It'll say Chansey Supply. And if you don't know how to identify them, they are the simple green buildings over here that have a Chansey on them. Now, these items start to show up in the shop as you start completing the game and moving forward. So if they don't show up for you, you most likely have to beat the game. But you have HP up, and this is going to increase your HP stat. You can have protein that's going to increase your attack stat, iron that's going to increase your defense stat, calcium that's going to increase your special attack stat, zinc is going to increase your special defense stat, and carbos is going to increase your speed stat. Each of these vitamins will increase your Pokemon's EVs by 10. One vitamin equals 10 EVs in that specific stat. So in order to maximize a stat completely, you're going to need 26 vitamins of that specific stat. In order to max out all your EVs, you're going to need a total of 53 vitamins. But remember, it's only going to be 26 vitamins for one maximum, and then you have to get 26 vitamins for another stat, and then the leftovers are going to be used on another stat. So just keep that in mind. This method can start to get really expensive if you're starting to train a lot of Pokemon and making battle-ready Pokemon in the game, but it should be a joke in order to get all the money needed to buy these items by the time you have them available in the shop at the end game. So to put the money idea in perspective, it's going to be 10,000 Poke Dollars or 10,000 LP for one vitamin, which means it's going to eventually cost you 530,000 or 530,000 LP to buy all of this so it's going to be that much to raise the stats of an entire pokemon with just using money alone which is not too bad if you're making a lot of money now there's also a, a cheaper alternative to raising pokemon stats that just require you to pick up certain items these are going to be called feathers and you're going to find a bunch of these in your game you're going to find them in a rage you're going to find them at the auction house these are going to be sparkling items that you're going to be picking up and they're going to be around the casa Roya lake these include the health feather which is going to give you one hp ev the muscle feather which is going to give you one attack ev the resist feather which is going to give you one defense ev the genius feather which is going to give you one special attack EV, Clever Feather, which is going to be one special defense EV, and the Swift Feather, which will give you one speed EV. While this sounds like a nice free method, remember, you need 252 EVs to fully train a stat. That means you're going to have to find 252 
of that specific stat feather in order to do this. So while this is a great method to pick up some free feathers, I wouldn't suggest relying only on this. But if you do like swimming, go ahead and do this. You're probably going to need 510 feathers in total, and hopefully you get the right feathers that match your stats at this lake. A quick tip that the game added in as an indicator is that once you max out a complete stat, there's going to be sparkling stats when you have it maxed out. See if you maxed out a Pokemon stat, go ahead, click on the Pokemon, hit check summary, and then when you are on their stat distribution page, just press L that says switch graph view. Once you do that, you should see something that looks like this on special attack, which is nice and shiny. This indicates that this is fully trained in that stat. By the way, to get this, I killed 28 Psyduck, and this took me about 12 minutes. Another pro tip is meeting in the southern part of Lavincia, and you'll find a woman there with her Luxio who will check your Pokemon effort values. Even though you can check the values yourself, like we just said, you can check with this character to see if you have your stats maxed out. And you'll get a bonus for this because she'll give you something called an effort ribbon because you have maxed out the stat of a Pokemon. The effort ribbon is basically just a flex and people might wonder where you got it from and uh, you can keep that to yourself and you got this from this guide here. If you don't want to spend money or don't have vitamins in your shop available to you or just don't want to swim hours for feathers, I got you. This is method number two, EV battle training. This is the classical way of doing it. Since you can't turn off EXP share in the game, this can also be used to your advantage to train an entire team of Pokemon when you catch or defeat them. Every Pokemon that you battle in the wild gives you their own EV point in that specific stat. Lechonk gives you one EV in HP. So you would have to battle Lechonk 252 times in order to max out that stat. That's a lot of Lechonks and that's going to take you a very, very long time. Luckily, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they already give you access to the EV training items at the beginning of the game. So for those people who want to be hardcore EV trainers from the start of the game, this is the solution and it requires you to not have to knock out 252 of one Pokemon. Let me introduce you to the power items. These power items can be found if you open up your map and go to a town and select the Delibird presence. You can identify the Delibird present shop by the red and the fact that Delibird is on it. Inside the shop, you're going to select on to general goods. Once you do that, you're going to see all the power items listed here. The power weight is going to help with HP, plus 8 EVs in HP. The power bracer will give you plus 8 EVs of the attack stat. The power belt will give you plus 8 EVs of defense stat. The power lens will give you plus 8 EVs of special attack stat. The power band will give you plus 8 EVs of special defense stat. And the power anklet will give you plus 8 EVs of speed stat. Keep in mind, the inventory at Deli Bird also expands as you progress through the game. This will cost you a total of 60,000 Poké Dollars to get all of these items. If you want to train multiple Pokémon in your party, I suggest getting six of each power item that you can bring with you, which will bring you to a total of about 360,000 Poké Dollars. But a smart way of doing this is just throw a Pokemon in the front of your party that's over leveled with EV stats you don't care about and bring five Pokemon that you want to EV train. That way you can not worry about the front party Pokemon just battling whatever they want while the ones with the correct power items according to their stats benefit from that. Now let's go back to our Lechonk encounter. When you battle a Lechonk, you get one EV point in HP. We're going to give Lechonk a power item. In this case, it's going to be the power weight, which will increase the EV gain by eight so that when you do fight a Lechonk in the wild, you'll then be earning 8 plus 1 with a total of 9 EVs in HP per battle. With the Lechonk, that means you don't have to knock out 252 of them. Now you just have to knock out Lechonk 28 times to maximize those EVs in that particular stat. So if you get anything from this section, just knock out 28 Pokemon that have the same EV stat with the corresponding power item to maximize that stat completely. Just 28. That's it. That's all you got to remember. Also, please remember, once your EVs are maxed out at 510, you don't have to worry about battling anything else that'll ruin your EV stats that you've gained. A fully EV trained Pokemon cannot be messed with unless you give it berries to reduce the EVs. Now for my favorite part of the video, Pokemon EV training locations. I'm going to be focusing on the first area to make your EV training a lot more simpler. That way you don't have to travel across the map and fly to different spots just to get EV training done. Just go to the first area, follow these ones I'm listing out, and you should be done in 13 minutes or less with one entire stat. Some great Pokemon to do EV training on for HP will be Lechonk in the starting area, 
Paldean Wooper, and Azuril around South Province Area 1. These Pokemon will all net you plus one EV stat in HP. Another great encounter to have in these starting areas are Fighting Flamigos. These Pokemon actually give you plus two attack stat, and it would probably be faster to go through a bunch of these Pokemon here. A great spot to find Flamigos will be in the South Province Area 1. The trained defense stats in the game, a great Pokemon that you can bump into are Tarantulas. They are literally also everywhere in the starting area, and these Pokemon will net you a plus one EV defense. You can also fight Scatterbugs, which also give a plus one EV in defense. And you can see that they're also around the Tarantulas. Some Pokemon in Area 1 that you could use for special attack EV stat trading include Psyduck. This should give you plus 1 EV in special attack. If you go by the ruins at night, you'll find a bunch of Ghastly in Area 1. These are the ruins over here. And Ghastlies will also be able to give you 1 EV stat in special attack. And there's a lot of Ghastlies here, so you can have a lot of fun with training that. You'll find a bunch of Houndors here. Each Houndor will give you 1 plus EV yield in special attack in the cave that you and the legendary Pokemon explored at the start of the game. If you're trying to train special defense, I highly suggest hop-ups. They are literally everywhere, and there are a bunch of them. Each one of these hop-ups will be giving you plus one special defense stat in EV. These are all located in the starting area of the game. Pokemon that you encounter in area one that gives speed include Buizel, Fido, Fletchlings, and Pommies. All these Pokemon together will give you plus one EV stat in speed. You can do a combination of fighting any of them. As long as you're able to knock out 28, you'll max out the speed stat. EV training is only just the beginning of understanding how to make a powerful Pokemon. Click on this video to see how you can make your Pokemon even more powerful.